What's up guys, it is Brandon from the Two Piece Man and welcome back to a Premier League prediction, something I haven't done in a long freaking time, I haven't done it in a while, it's been, it's been a while, it's been a while, like I said with Covid, with, I'm working, like a room with the university, like it's been a long time, I'm not using these as excuses because I should be more consistent and be uploading more but it is what it is, it happens. I'm going to be more consistent this time. 2021, let's go. All right, let's get into the first game. Actually, before we even get into the first game, make sure you click that like button, right? And click that subscribe button as well. There's going to be more videos coming out all the way into the season. We're going to be doing Premier League predictions all the way until the last freaking game. I'm going to promise myself that, all right? And for you guys as well, for all the fans that are watching as well. We're going to make every single Premier League prediction up until the last one, all right? No flipping excuses. Alright, so click the like button and click that subscribe button as well. We're going to get into the first game on a Saturday. Alright, let's get into this. <sighs> Even got my mug as well. Alright, first game at 12.30 on a Saturday. So by the time this comes out, it'll be, it'll be Saturday. Manchester City versus West Ham. Now, let's be honest. Manchester City have been on a freaking roll. They have been on a freaking roll. They've been killing it. They've been killing it. I mean, how many how many points are they clear at the top? What, 10 points clear? 10 points clear. And there's still 13 games to go. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's actually mad. Like, how well they've done. Like, Man City have literally been kicking ass. They've been kicking ass. Like, they've been unbeaten in their last 15 games. So, you know, last 15 home games. They've literally only conceded, like, what, three goals in their last home games as well. So, it's like, they've been on a roll. And they won their last game. Uh, was it in the Champions League? I can't pronounce their freaking name. But they won 2-0. And, you know, they're killing it. Like, everyone's everyone's turning up. Sterling, uh, what is it, um, Gabriel Jesus. The one that's really put in shift for Manchester, what is it, City... I think when De Bruyne got injured, it was Gundogan. Like, he's really putting a shift. He's getting into the box more. He's starting to score more goals. He's linking up with the player more. Oh, well, I already, already knew he would link up with playing everything like that. His passing was always good. But he's now scoring more goals. I think he's scored more goals this season than he did the last previous seasons he was with Manchester City. So, you know, I think he's tweaked his game a bit. I think Pep wants, wants him to go forward more, get into attacking areas more. And you can see how it's paying off. And even Phil Foden now is just banging the goals. Like, I mean, I'll be real. Last season, when I saw Phil Foden, I didn't really race him that much. I, was, I looked at him and I was like, what does he actually do? But now I see him, he actually puts a lot of quality in, into the box. He actually shows he's attacking threat towards the opposition. Like, good pass and good movement off the ball, which is what I've noticed. I mean, that goal when Manchester City beat like, Liverpool, what I think it was, what, 4-1. I mean, that was class. Yes, Alisson did give the ball away, but even to finish that, when I saw that, I was like, all right, Manchester City do have a player on them. He's a very, very good player. That's a young son. Like, he's actually really, really good when you actually look at him. Now, when I look at West Ham, like, they've actually done pretty well this season. I mean, under David Moyes, I'll be honest. When they got David Moyes, I laughed. I laughed. I didn't even think they'd be doing that well. I didn't even think they'd be scoring that many goals. I thought they'd be in a relegation fight. Because, you know, with David Moyes, these past teams the, these past teams that he's had, they've played pretty bad. I swear there was a period where West Ham fans were just fed up of how they were playing. Under Pellegrini, you know, I swear they were on the brink of even relegation or just like the team just wasn't playing well. But bloody hell, they're fourth. Like, <laughs> West Ham, West Ham are fourth. West Ham, they're above us. They're above Chelsea. Like, legit. They're in the top four spot. They're in the Champions League spot. Imagine they finish in the top four. West Ham. West Ham in the Champions League next season. Do you know how mad that would be? Do you know how mad that would be? David Moyes is going to manage a West Ham team in the Champions League. But when you actually look at the players that they have, they've actually done really well. It's not world-class players. They haven't spent tons of money. But they've brought in some good players. Number one for me has to be Thomas Sojcek. I think he's actually made a massive impact, not just defensively in the midfield, but also 
how he's always getting forward, how he's also linking with the attack, how he wants to score goals as well. Like, you know, he's actually a very good player. Declan Rice, now you can see why Frank Lampard actually wanted to sign him. The impact that he makes. Like he's only, what, he's 20? I think he's 22 or something like that. And you can see that Chelsea wants him as well. I heard, uh, was it a story that West Ham will only would accept one hundred. Or was it um accept? Uh, was it uh, us to have Declan Rice for one hundred million? So they're even putting him out one hundred million. I don't even think he's worth that, to be honest with you. But the fact that you know West Ham are putting him up for one hundred million, and that you know it's crazy. Like it's mad. And Antonio as well. Like ever since he's come back as well, he's made a difference. Uh, was it with uh, West Ham? I think Antonio's always been one of their best players. To be honest with you, I'll be real. I think what Antonio's has always made a difference towards them and how they play, especially the threat that he poses. Not only is he sh not only is he fast, but he's also strong as well. Those are the type of strikers that you need in the Premier League. Uh, against Manchester City, though, I just don't really see them winning it. To be honest with you, I mean they're a good squad. Don't get me wrong, fourth on the table, but I just don't even see them getting a point. I'll be honest with you. I mean, especially it's at the Etihad as well, and the four Manchester City are on. I just don't even see them getting it. I'll just be so real. Yo, I'm gonna just put, I'm gonna say Manchester City three, West Ham nil. I don't see West Ham getting jack all from this game. I just see them losing it. I'll just be so real. They ain't gonna be winning nothing, man. Like Man City's, they've just played too well this season, and the form that the players are on their last few games, Foden, Gundogan, Sterling. You know their last game when they beat was it Arsenal one nil. Away, like freaking heck, man. I mean, I know they're always got Arsenal because it's Arsenal, but still, like, come on. <sighs> They've done it, man. They're, 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 they're probably going to win it, let's be honest. They're going to win the league. Their 10 points clear, they're going to win it. All right, 3 0, Manchester City. Now, the next game at 3 o'clock on a Saturday after the Man City game is at the Hawthorns, West Brom. West Brom versus Brighton. Now, pardon me, West Brom have had no wins in seven games. No wins in the last seven games, alright? They are currently in the rele relegation zone with 19 points. West Brom, to be honest with you, that's not a shock. 25 games and 14 points, they've been dreadful this season. Bloody, this is actually really, really bad. <laughs> Shit. They are eight points behind Fulham. West Brom on, on 14 points, Fulham are on 22 points, and Fulham are still in the relegation zone. That's how bad West Brom have played. I mean, they've conceded, I think, an all time high in the Premier League 55 goals. They've conceded 55 goals this season. I mean, I don't know how bad your defence can be, but... 55 goals, bloody hell. Must have some dead-ass defence to concede 55 goals. Do you know how mad that is? 55 goals. And you expect the manager, who's it's, I think Sam Allardyce, to have faith in the squad. Like, it's just... It's just... A, it's beyond belief. Like, I just... I just don't understand it, man. Like... The defence is just bad. I mean, bringing Brek Ivanovic, like, come on, like them signing Ivanovic, he's he's past it, man. It was good, it was Chelsea, but like, come on, he's past it, man. What my man's like, what? Thirty-seven years old, man. Like he's gone past it, man. Like this geezer's gone. All right, who else? Who else is there? Freaking what? O'Shea, he's not all, all that. Ajay, he's probably their best defender. He's not even all that as well, and he's twenty-seven. Like, nah, man. Like these defenders are just crap. Like, man. The only decent player in the squad, really, is bloody... What is it? It's not... Yo, it's probably just... What's his name again? Matthew Pereira and Callum Robertson, and that's about it. They still have got Robertson Connor, Jesus, but... This team's just terrible, man. It's just bad. Holy crap, man. And then, the, you know, you see Brighton... Brighton are literally 16th. Like, if Brighton are doing better, they actually have some good players. Like, Mupe, Trezard, you know, Lamptey. They actually have some decent players in the squad. I honestly don't see West Brom getting anything out of this game. 
I'll be so honest with you. I mean, I know Brighton, they've only like won one of their last six away games, but against West Brom, they're looking at that. Graham Potter's looking at that, and, and he's basically saying to himself, yo, we can actually get a win, to be fair. Like, they're actually terrible. Like, he will look at them and say they're terrible. Obviously, he's not going to go to the manager. He's not going to go to Sam Allardyce and say that his team's terrible. But in the back of his mind, they know they're bad. All right? But West Brom c- c- do have a tendency to draw, you know, against big teams. Like, with, the, with Liverpool, they drew against them. So, you know, they're not... It's not easy. Any game in the Premier League, it's not easy these days. I mean, back in the day, probably 10 years ago, it was easy. But just not anymore. It's just most the most unpredictable league going now. So, it's just one of those things. My prediction for this game... Yeah, it's going to be West Brom 1, Bryson 2. I reckon West Brom will get a goal, but I just don't see them winning it. I don't see them getting anything out of the game. I don't see... I don't see anything, really. I mean, I think... Was it Matthew Pereira will probably score? But after that, it's going to be Neil Mupe scoring two goals. It's going to be a field day for Neil Mupe, let's just be honest with you. West Brom, bloody hell, 14 points... Out of 25 games, do you know how bad you have to be? Do you know how bad your defence has to be to be in that position? Like, bloody heck, like, that's mad. Even Newcastle aren't even in that position. And their defence is terrible. Their defence is actually terrible. And they're not even in that position. Like, their defence is so bad. And they're not even in that position. Oh, look at Arsenal's defence for freak's sake. It's freaking terrible as well. And they're not even in that position. So, it's like, it's just crazy, man. It's crazy. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's the next game. At 5.30, Leeds versus Aston Villa. Uh, uh, Villa, they've been playing... They haven't been really playing the best. I mean, ever since Jack Reed got injured, let's be honest, Dave. It's been a bit of, it's been a bit bad, let's be real. I mean, they lost their last game against Leicester, losing 2-1. I think if Jack Grealish was on the pitch, they probably would have scraped a draw or even a win, If, in all honesty. I'll, I'll, I'll be so honest with you. Um, they're on 36 points, Leeds are on 35, so Leeds are just like, what, one point behind Villa. Bear in mind, Liverpool have, bear in mind, Aston Villa have two games in hand. They do have two games in hand. So, in, in all honesty, they probably, depending on who the two games are, maybe they would be probably, you know, further than what they are. You know, maybe they'd be up the tip, maybe they'd be sixth. Sixth, scraping fifth. You never know. Uh, Aston Villa, I don't know if Gre- when Greedish is going to come back, maybe he's injured for this game. But, in my opinion, I do feel as though Villa do have enough quality to win the game. I mean, Martinez has been, to be fair, one of their best signings. I mean, he's, he's made most of this, the most saves. They've had 12 clean sheets this season. When before, I think last season, they probably conceded the most goals at the, at the fewest clean sheets and were on the brink of relegation. But now, they've really stepped up and they're 8th in the table. Aston Villa are 8th. Aston Villa... When I was in Kingsbury School, this was a team we used to mock because they were so bad, and now and they, I swear, they got relegated. Holy crap, man! The eighth, it's mad. And then with Leeds, I think they've lost their five. They've lost five games out of eight, so they're not doing too amazing. But they actually did win their last game three 0 I think it was for Rafinha who scored that wonderful free kick. And Patrick Bamford has been on it as well. I think Patrick Bamford always scores against Aston Villa as well. In all honesty, for this game. I think it's going to be a draw, you know. I'm going to say Leeds 2, Aston Villa 2. That's what I'm going to say over this game. I, I genuinely think it's going to be a draw. Yeah, both teams are good, man. Both teams are good. I, I just really, I, you can't really say who's, who's going to win or who's going to lose. I'm, I'm just going to say a draw for this. That's what I'm saying. And then, the next game, Newcastle versus Wolves. Let's be honest with you. Wolves, like, Newcastle are like, what, three points off relegation. Wolves... They're 12 on 33 points. Um, I don't think Wolves have had the best season, in all honesty. I think last season they either finished sixth or seventh or sixth, and now they're 12th. I think they've gone down a lot. Um, I honestly don't know what it is with the squad. I don't think they've really been playing the best. I mean, they do have some good players. Like I said, Adama Traore. What is it? Uh, Peto. Sorry, not Peto. Neto. Gosh. I think Ra Jimenez is a real blow to them. I think if they had Ra Jimenez back and he wasn't injured, they'd probably be higher than what they are right now. I mean, you can see the effect it has when they're not there. I mean, with that other striker as well, Silva, he's just not doing it. But when Ra Jimenez is there, you can see the impact that he does. You know, with the link-up play, with the goal scoring that he does, you know, it was just a horrific injury that he had. 
and that's really set Wolves back. Like how you know Liverpool with that Van Dijk, that's really set them back as well. I mean, like Liverpool are sixth. Like these are the champ. These are well, these are the champions of England. Like they're sixth now. But man, um, so for this game between Newcastle and Wolves, I reckon it's going to be a very very tight game. Just knowing that both defenses are terrible, but. Well, they're bad, but Newcastle's is worse. So for this one, I'm going to say Newcastle 2, Wolves 3. I think Wolves will just claw them at St. James's Park. I just, I, I feel as though Newcastle, they don't have a lot going forward. They don't actually have a structure or a game plan. I think Steve Bruce, they just wing it. They just get St. Maximum on the ball. You know, get him to do, get him to do all the hard work and the players just try and get into position, try and get into goal scoring positions. I don't feel as though there's a structure or a plan. I mean, when we verse them, in the first half, they gave us all the possession, gave us loads of time on the ball. They weren't pressing it as much as they did in the second half. And when I watched them and I think about it, I'm thinking, why didn't they just do this in the first half? They looked so much better and actually had shots on target when they pressed us in the second half. But then in the first half, they just didn't do anything. And it was just too late and then they lost the game. That was three points chucked out of the window. So, you know, we don't really know what's happening. It's just a bit of a madness with Newcastle. But I always thought Steve Bruce was a dead manager, let's just be honest. I mean, if you're getting sacked from Villa in the championship, he was going to be a dog shit manager, let's be real. And look how Villa are playing right now compared to his ugly ass team. So, yeah. Like I said, Newcastle 2, Wolves 3. Right, on a Sunday. Actually, I'm going to leave this game to the On a Sunday, Crystal Palace versus Fulham. Now, uh, big up my G was it, uh, Ben Teke for scoring the goal in the end. This is a man that hasn't even, hasn't even scored that much, but he's sort of picking up form, sort of. I'm not saying he, he's picked up form, he's sort of picked up form. There's still Zaha FC though, so, you know, just letting all you Crystal Palace fans know that your team does get carried by Zaha all the time. Um, to be fair, they haven't really been playing that bad. To be, I mean, the 13th, they could do better. I mean, they're against what, Fulham. And to be fair, Fulham are not an easy team. They are they are pretty much a hard team. Or I'll give you that. Fulham are generally they're one of those teams where it's really hard. It's not hard to break them down, but they're compact. I mean, you saw. I mean, when I the last one game I watched, I think it was against Man United, and they scored first. So it's like they they will come at you. They will come at your clock. So it's not one of those easy games that you can just be like, oh, you know what, we can get a win. Like nah. But they have won three of their last games against Fulham, so that is something. I think with Crystal Palace, I think they just need a f- they do need a few more signings. They need to keep Zaha at all costs. I mean, they need to keep him at all costs, or it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a madness for Roy Hudson. Let's just be let's just be real, and for the team as well, they're gonna really really struggle. We don't know without Zaha. Even if he gets injured as well, they're gonna really struggle. You can tell Zaha brings the team up. You can tell he's passionate for the game as well. Like it shows. It really does show. I mean, the last match, what, lose against Leicester. This is the last, what, five matches they lost against Leicester. What is it? What the fuck's that? So, lost against Leicester, drew against West Ham, beat Everton, drew against Burnley, and beat, what is it, Sheffield. So, it's not really that bad. The goals, that they can see 1.3 goals, I think, per game. They've had, what is it? No, that's for Fulham. Bloody hell, what's Crystal Palace? That's Fulham, actually. You are actually in the relegation zone. They're 18th. Bloody heck. Fulham are bad, fam. Jesus. They're actually three points, you know, from, oh, uh, was it, um, off, you know, survival. But knowing the Premier League, it's the most unpredictable game. So I'm just going to go Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 2. I'm going to go with that. I can't even say Crystal Palace are going to win it because knowing them, they're probably going to bowl it and two lines are. So, yeah. Our right, next game, Tottenham versus Burnley. Tottenham will play like bollocks. I think one of the... <coughs> Here's what it is, right? So, in the top six, right, there's always one team in the top six. And if you, people don't know the top six, who, you know, they should know. Top six are, was it Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City... Chelsea, Tottenham, and Manchester United. Those are the top six. I've literally gone with the theory. It's only one of the top six that plays rubbish. Always. 
and it switches. It went from Arsenal to Chelsea, and it's now happening to Tottenham. It's happening to Jose Mourinho. They're ninth in the table with 36 points. You know, same level on points with Villa. You do have two games in hand. Uh, Tottenham have a one game in hand, and uh, I just, I just don't know. I think they play. To be fair, they actually did play well in the last game in the Europa League when Deli Ali scored that over a kick. So fair play to him. Uh, I heard that, what is it, they're making a bid for, what is it, Nick Pope, who's actually a decent goalkeeper. So we'll give him that. Uh, I don't know, with Tottenham, they've just dipped down, to be honest. They're playing really well, and then they've just had, a, like, a massive dip. Uh, I don't know why it happens to these top six, like, one of the top six. Like, it just, it's just a massive dip in how they're playing. Like, I don't, I'm not actually sure, to, like, what it is when it comes to that. Like, it's a, it's a bit weird. It's a bit of a madness, to be honest with you. I mean, with Jose Mourinho, first season he, he actually does quite decent with the team, but then I think it's always with the second season they just start to like just, just everything just goes flat. I think when Jose Mourinho manages the team, the second season it just goes wrong, and we don't know what it is. I mean, they lost two one against West Ham in the last game, <coughs> which to be fair, West Ham are playing you know decent this season. They are playing good. Losing against Man City, losing against what, Everton in the FA Cup. Lost against us, got dominated by us actually. Lost against Brighton, lost against Liverpool. Just firming lots and lots of L's, you know, it, like it's just, it's just, ew, I don't know what it is, man. Telling them they're just, they're just not playing the best. I think they're just conceding really stupid goals to be honest with you, but yeah. It is what it is. They don't freaking bar me because I'm a dog shit anyway. So I'm going to freaking take that. I'm going to take that. So, but they're against Burnley. Burnley are bastards to get past. They're bastards to get past. But Burnley, you know, they, if you get one goal against them, then they're going to fucking break down, let's be honest. They play the long ball technique. Sean Dice FC. You know, long ball FC. It's Sean Dice. You know, hold up. We get the flick on from Chris Wood into Ashley Barnes. We don't order that. You know, you know McNeil. Freaking, what is it? Um, Brown Hill. Goodmanson, all of them, we you know, it's the same tactic as Burnley. I still think Tottenham are going to win it. I think they'll win it. Sadly, I think they'll win it. I'm going to say Tottenham 3, Burnley now. I just think they're going to win it. Next game, Arsenal versus... No, Leicester City versus Arsenal. <sighs> Talk about Arsenal, man. <sighs> Arsenal, man. They beat Benfica 3-2, but it's just the same cycle with this team, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I just feel as though it's just the same thing that happens. Arsenal, I just, you're just Arsenal fans. Your team just doesn't, is, isn't making any progress. Your team is literally just getting worse. I feel as though Arsenal just get worse every year. That's not even me taking the piss. When you had Arsenal Wenger... Your team was constantly getting top four, top four. You know, apart from that one season. Apart from that one season, you didn't get top four. Now, you're struggling to even get Europa League now. Like, you're 11th. Like, you are six points off sixth place. Sorry, fifth. No, sixth, sixth. Like, if you lose a couple of games, you will... There's a potential you'll go down to 15th. Like Arsenal, they've had 10 wins, 4 draws and 11 losses. You know the Arsenal back in the day? Minimum for them was top 4. Minimum for them was top 4. They've just gone down. Man City, okay, I don't expect them to win. They lost 1-0. Fair play to them for losing that. Like, well, not fair play to them, but you know. No one expects them to win it. No one expects them to win it. They weren't good enough in that game. Being Leeds, 4-2, respect that. Leeds, they're either good or bad. You, you don't know what Leeds you're going to get. Losing against Aston Villa, because if VAR did come into it, but even if even so VAR come into it, you still should have got at least something for it. You should have at least you know got a draw off that game. Like, I know Villa are playing well, but come on, man. You're Arsenal, man. you got to win that game. Wolves, VAR was against them. Drawing against... Man United, I feel as though they should have won that. They should have won that. 
So being Southampton, rate that, fair enough. Good result. Being Newcastle, fair enough. Drawing against Palace, shouldn't have happened. Being West Brom, should be should be them, that's standard. Being Brighton, obviously they beat us as well. But, like, it just, they're just up and down, man. Arsenal's just up and down. To me, there's just no progress. This ain't the Arsenal world. It's just no progress with this team, man. Like, I'll just, I'll be so honest. I don't think I've seen that Arsenal team in like the last 10 seasons where they've made a genuine, you know, effort to compete, you know, for the title. I've never actually seen an Arsenal team like that. I hear about Arsenal playing all this brilliant football back in the day, but not winning anything. I always thought, why don't I win anything? They just, I just believe the players just don't have that mentality. They need to adopt that mentality. I don't care what any Arsenal fan says. Your team's just getting worse. Your team are making no progress. It's literally, it's literally the same old Arsenal, but it's just a worse form than imaginable. Like, if you get top, four, if you get sixth place, imagine if you get sixth place, you're lucky. Like, your goal is literally to get Europa League. And now you're hoping that like, you win the Europa League, so you get Champions League. And you flopped the last two Champions League, the last two Europa League seasons. You flopped. Don't make it a third. At least win this one. Like, come on. At least win the Europa League this season so you can at least get Champions League next season. Because you've been off. You've been out of Champions League for about, what, four or five seasons now? You've been off? Like, man, you got to improve, man. Like, what the fuck is the Arsenal team, fam? Like, it seems to be good, man. You had Invincible, you had Burkamp, you had freaking Henri. Perez, man. Uh, this team's gone down, man. Standards drop these days, man. Yo. I know VAR's killed, but uh, yo, man, you can't be like, no, nah, man. No, nah, man, see how it's going And Leicester City, well, Leicester City, they're just playing brilliant. Madison, Vardy, he's like, Vardy's like, what, 34? Still banging goals. Madison, Tillemans, Fafana, another world class, another good centre back for Leicester City that's been playing well. Harvey Barnes as well, only 22 years old, and he's killing it. Like, mad. Harvey Barnes, you know. I didn't even rate Harvey, Harvey Barnes that much, but now he's actually doing really well. Main players for me that are really good in Leicester's Madison and Vardy. And I mean, I think I think if Madison goes, and Leicester do have a massive problem on their hands, and they will struggle a lot for this game. Man, I don't even want to predict this, man, but it's probably going to be the truth. Let's just be honest with you, man. Let's be honest with ourselves, man. Let's just be really honest. I don't even see Arsenal getting a point from this. I'm going to say Leicester City 2, Arsenal 1. I don't really see Arsenal getting anything from it. I think Leicester City's team. It's not... It's not... It's just... I think they just gel well together. In terms of player quality, Arsenal seems better. But I just think when it comes to actual play, Leicester City's play is just better than Arsenal's. Hands down. I think Leicester City will win that. I think Arsenal aren't going to get anything from that game. Let's just be honest. Alright. Next game. Sheffield United versus Liverpool. Now. Probably a few. Maybe what. Three or four months ago. I'd say Liverpool to smash them 4-0. 5-0. Now. They'd be lucky if they even draw it. The amount of injuries that Liverpool have had. <coughs> This season has just been crazy. They've had an insane amount of injuries, which has just cost them loads and loads of games. You can see how important Van Dijk is to that squad. He's the structure of that team. Henderson's now injured. He's probably going to undergo surgery. That's what I'm hearing as well. Like, they had to move their CDM to defence to centre-back, and now he's injured as well. Losing against Everton. Losing against Le- Leicester. Losing against Man City. Losing against... Brighton. I think those are all three home games they've lost. Four home games they've lost, I think. No, three home games they've lost. I don't think... That hasn't happened since 1923, using three home games in a row. Uh, That's how bad it's got for Liverpool. That's how bad it's got for Jurgen Klopp and the players as well. My my dad said to him... Oh, uh, yeah, my dad's not here. Uh, Was it for this Premier League prediction? But he will be here for the next one. So I'll count on that one. 
make sure you smash the like and subscribe for that. Um, Liverpool, man, like, they've just gone down a lot. And I know I rant about them, I talk about them, but, you know, it's just a very, very unlucky season for them losing all their centre backs. The ex centre backs getting injured and everything like that. Like, it's crazy, man, it's crazy. With Sheffield, well, they're playing like dog shit. But Liverpool are not that bad to lose the game. So for this one, I'm going to say, is that Bromwell Lane? I'm going to say Liverpool. I'm going to say Sheffield United. I'm going to say Sheffield United 1. Liverpool 1. I think it's going to be a draw. Never thought I'd actually say that. But I just genuinely think it's going to be a draw. I just don't. That's Liverpool's spine at the back is just so weak. Even with the two new defenders, like, it's just terrible. No com there's no really, there's no communication with the goalkeeper and the defenders either. And your two centre backs and your CDM's gone. Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. But it is what it is. And the final game. The final game. At Stamford Bridge. It is Chelsea versus Manchester United. Tuchel goes head to head with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Stamford Bridge. The last time we raced Man United at Old Trafford, we drew 0 0. Now they're coming to Stamford Bridge. Now I'll be 100% honest with this Manchester United are second in the table. 10 points behind Man City. They've been playing really, really well. Did get knocked out of the Champions League. The one man that's made a difference towards Manchester United is Bruno Ross Clark Fernandez. And yes, he gets to Ross Clark at the end because that's the impact he's made onto Manchester United. Bruno Ross Clark Fernandez. Has made a massive impact towards Manchester United and the way they play. He's the one that creates, he's the one that delivers, he's the one that turns up in big games. Bruno Fernandes, that's him. He's the man that does it for Manchester United. He does it time and time again. He's the man that does it. And the team gels better, the team plays better when he's in it. And you can just tell. You can just tell, and that's the case. With us, we did beat Atletico Madrid 1-0, who are top of the Liga. An amazing, was it, bicycle kick from Giroud. I feel as though we'll be able to take the three points away from Manchester United. I don't care how well Man United are playing. I know they're second and we're fifth, but I reckon we got the three points in the bag. I'm going to say Chelsea 2, Manchester United 1. And that's the end of... Of the, Premier, of the Premier League prediction, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. Make sure you subscribe as well. Click that subscribe button as well. Leave a comment for your predictions as well. These Premier League predictions are coming back, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you guys in a bit. And peace!